All right, let's just kill this summer. Okay, so next turn, we will have a meteor. So we have to be very cautious about our troop movements this turn. Very cautious. Meteor strike! All right, Olaf, Olaf, fuck. <laughs> Actually, that isn't so bad. Are you sure about that? So will he pop his meteor at the end of his turn? Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. I have no idea if... Yeah. Bahaha, <laughs> you played right into my hands! No! God damn it! The artillery blob didn't work. Oh, God. Alright. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna be building up, like, a very convenient meteor strike blob right here. It's like, Sturm, look at this nice little chunk of units. Don't you want to meteor strike this area right here? Look at how many units there are here. Now the main problem area is up here. All of this going on up here is what's causing me the most physical discomfort. This area is not good either. I hate this, but I'm mainly worried about this. Come on, come on, come on, no! <laughs> no! That's the worst place, oh no! <laughs> Max is gone. All right guys. If, if the meteor doesn't hit here, I don't know what I'll do. Okay, here we go. Third meteor strike. Hit eagle, 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 eagle. I swear to <gasps> God, Sturm. What you just saw was a fail compilation of me trying to control Sturm's meteor strike in the final mission of the advanced campaign. Time and time again, I tried to make the meteor hit a group of mechs down in the south, and time and time again, the meteor refused to do what I wanted it to. So I decided to do some research on exactly how the meteor works. I think this knowledge will be quite useful for a lot of players once the reboot camp launches, as knowing how to bait Sturm's meteor can be the difference between winning and losing. So in this video, I will be explaining exactly how Sturm's Meteor Strike works. Meteor Strike is the CO power of Sturm, the main antagonist of Advanced Wars 1 and 2. When used, it calls down a huge meteor from the sky and hits a large cluster of units for 8 HP of damage. The meteor cannot kill units, only reduce them to 1 HP. And the exact area of the meteor's impact is identical to that of a missile fired from a silo, meaning the meteor can strike a total of 13 units if they are perfectly clumped together. The meteor must always be centered on top of an enemy unit. It cannot land on an empty space between two units to try and get both of them. Nor can it land on one of your units to strike two enemy units on both sides of it. In Advanced Wars 1, the meteor strike uses the slow power meter, meaning it costs 50,000 funds to charge. This will take quite some time in versus mode, but when you face Sturm in the final battle of the campaign, this tends to happen very fast, considering the huge number of units on the map. In the campaign, the meteor actually has a hidden component to it. It actually boosts Sturm's firepower by a pretty significant amount. He gets the same 10% defense that every other CO gets during their powers, meaning his defense will go up to 90% in total, but his firepower actually rises by 20% instead of the normal 10, meaning his troops will be at 150% strength, the same as that of Max. When you play as Sturm in versus mode, the Meteor Strike is nerfed and only deals 4 damage, but it is still pretty strong. But this variant of the Meteor Strike provides no additional firepower increase beyond the normal 10% that everyone else gets. In Advanced Wars 2, Meteor Strike is even scarier, as it has been buffed. It has a price of 10 stars, making it the most expensive superpower in the game, but in addition to dealing 8 HP of damage to all enemies hit like it used to do in Advanced Wars 1, Meteor Strike also raises the firepower and defense of Sturm's troops up to 40% for one turn, making them incredibly deadly. I would actually go as far as to say that in some battles, the firepower and defense increase is even more scary than the damage to Meteor deals, especially if Sturm has a very large army on the map. However, let's talk about the AI of the meteor itself. Most players understand that it tends to hit the place on the map where it can do the most damage, but there seems to be an element of randomness involved in where the meteor lands, and this is because there are actually three different meteor strikes that can occur, and which one you get is subject to a random number generator, meaning you have no control over it. However, since the RNG is re-rolled when you restart, you can reset the game and have the meteor land elsewhere, and in fact, it's not uncommon to see this done by certain speedrunners. For the sake of simplicity, I will give these three meteors different names. 
names, so they are more easily distinguishable. I will call them the HP Meteor, the Value Meteor, and the Indirect Meteor. First, let's take a look at the HP Meteor. This Meteor only cares about removing as many hit points as possible from enemy units. It doesn't care about costs. It will prioritize a huge blob of infantry over a smaller blob of more valuable tanks. To show this in action, here is a map with 13 infantry units clumped together in a perfect Meteor Strike formation. Next to them is a single medium tank. While the group of infantry combined has a value of 13,000 compared to the medium tank's 16, the HP Meteor will always strike the group of infantry since there are more of them on the map. But here's the interesting bit. By loading an emulator save state and deleting the infantry units one by one, we can attempt to see when the massive meteor changes its course to the medium tank. By using save states, we know that the meteor will be the same every time, since when you load a save state, you also load the same random number generator the emulator uses. And as you can see right here, the massive meteor will continue to strike the group of infantry even down to the last two. The massive meteors simply do not care about the value of the units. It will literally target two infantry units worth 2,000 over a medium tank worth 16,000, even if that is eight times as much. Next up, let's talk about the value meteor. This meteor only cares about the total cost of units it hits. As you can see here, the value meteor will always strike the medium tank every single time, regardless of how many infantry is clumped together on the right hand side. However, if we replace the group of infantry with mechs, tripling the value of the group, the value meteor will change its course and strike the mechs instead. If any enemy units happen to get caught up in the meteor's path, it will simply detract them from the total damage dealt. The meteor will gladly do some friendly fire damage to your own units if it means it can do more damage in total to the enemy. Lastly, let's talk about the third variant, the indirect meteor. This meteor behaves just like the value meteor, going for the biggest congregation of unit cost on the map, but with a twist. The indirect meteor treats all indirect units as being worth twice as much in terms of value. So for example, artillery, worth 6,000, would be calculated as being worth 12,000 for the purposes of the meteor's damage, while rockets would be seen as being worth 30,000. A battleship would be worth an astounding 56,000. To put it simply, this meteor hates indirect units and is far more likely to target them. It's like the meteor got really traumatized after playing against Grit in the advance campaign and wanted revenge. So, with this knowledge in mind, what is the best way to try and bait Sturm's Meteor in the campaign? Well, I would say that if you try to build a relatively big group of infantry and some mechs with some artillery mixed in, it should have a pretty good chance of drawing the Meteor's attention. If you put a single rocket into the formation, you pretty much guarantee the Meteor will strike there if it's an indirect Meteor, as it will treat the rocket as being worth 30,000. I think one of the reasons why I failed so much to bait the Meteor during my campaign stream was simply just poor luck. I most likely got three value Meteors in a row, and my formation only consisted of infantry and mechs. However, we are not quite done talking about the Meteor yet, because there is a brand new hidden mechanic in Advanced Wars 2 related to how the Meteor behaves in Fog of War. In Advanced Wars 1, the Meteor can strike any area of the map, regardless of your vision, which can be seen right here. However, in Advanced Wars 2, the unit the Meteor is centered on must be within Sturm's line of sight. Here, for example, you can see that Andy has multiple hidden missiles in the woods, and yet Sturm's Meteor opts to strike a single recon instead because it is within his vision range. If there's not a single enemy unit in sight, the Meteor will simply fail to spawn. The screen flashes white, but nothing happens. This means that when you play a Sturm in Fog of War, scouting your opponent is crucial. But it also means that you actually have more control over where you want the meteor to land. You can simply opt to just scout out the group of enemies you wanted to hit and leave the rest in the fog. I would actually go as far as to say that if you know what you're doing, Sturm's meteor can be a lot more powerful in the fog. Another thing I want to briefly mention is that I've read several places that in Advanced Wars 2 there is a minimum damage cap that will prevent the meteor from spawning if it doesn't do enough damage. I wasn't able to replicate this in any of my tests, but if anyone in the comment section knows more, then please let me know about it. I'm always curious to learn more about Advanced Wars. Anyway, that's all I have to say about the Meteor Strike. This could be valuable information once the reboot launches, but then again, they could also completely decide to change how the Meteor works, so if that happens, this video will be pretty much useless. But hey, at least it might still have been informative and somewhat entertaining, right? Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment, it really helps out the channel a lot. My name is Finn Manx, and I shall see you guys soon. Bye-bye!